guys what is up it is ivy concrete catwalk those of you who are new to my channel welcome i love all things thrift vintage new nearly new estate sailing sailing you name it i love it to my catwalkers Mwah. welcome back to a new video this sunday those of you who are newly subscribed thank you so much for coming along together on this journey. I've said previously that I wanted to have more openness, more discussions about things that I do, things that interest me. One of those things that I'm very passionate about is business ownership. Growing a business, I love it. If you are one of those people thinking about dipping a toe into owning a business, to give you a little bit of backbone about how I ended up as a reseller today. When I was a teenager, 14, 15, 16, I used to go to the thrift store with my mom. We used to go together a lot and look around, look for things, clothes, shoes, you name it. I even found my prom dress thrifting. I think my prom dress was all of five dollars if i can find a picture i will post it here here so you can see it if i don't i promise you i will show you that picture let's move it forward a little bit to the early 2000s ebay had come along at that point in time and i was interested interested to the point that i started looking for things on ebay at the point that i was buying things off of eBay, I decided that I wanted to experiment with maybe selling some things on eBay, and I did on a very small scale, it was successful. And I did it off and on for a couple of years and then decided that I wanted to give it a break. The next time that I revisited reselling was in late 2013, early 2014. I decided that I was gonna launch another small business, Concrete Catwalk, came across Poshmark, decided that I wanted to sell some things out of Concrete Catwalk on the platform. I started doing it, I became very successful at it. Please understand, I didn't have a vast knowledge of business and an understanding of what it meant but we're gonna get into that. So I'm kind of setting this up so that you guys who are brand new to wanting to own a business or have newly created a business, resale business, or if even you are new to Poshmark, these are eight things that reselling is going to teach you simultaneously as you're going down the road of running a business. I reached 200,000 followers on Poshmark about three or four weeks ago. I'll post it here, here so that you can see. I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper. Starting a resale business, you decide you wanna sell things. That is the awakening of entrepreneurship. The ideal that you are entrepreneurial in nature, in and of itself, it is a very brave thing to decide to want to do. It is a path that I am just speaking from experience that is rocky, exciting, can be difficult sometimes, the most elated you could ever possibly feel. It is a whole mixed bag of emotion. But one thing that I can say about being an entrepreneur, you have to be ready to accept the fact that having a business is like a baby. You have to get it from infancy all the way up until the point where it can take care of itself but come back because it still needs a little bit of guidance from you. That's the best way that I can equate it. Taking something that is so small, nurturing it and growing it, investing in it, guiding it so that it can grow and it can be what it is wanting to be. And that is a great business that gives you great happiness and great joy in doing. Reselling teaches you how to deal with disappointment. I don't care how successful you are, how small your business is, how large your business is, you're going to be dealing with disappointment, losing money, losing product, complaints. Sometimes the business has good months, sometimes it has bad months. You cannot please everybody. Sometimes you can't even please yourself because what you think you may be doing and doing the right thing by way of your business may not even be the right path to go down. And yes, having a business means sometimes you make a very bad decision and that decision impacts things significantly. 
you have to be willing to accept that a business is a cycle. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs, you're going to have peaks, you're going to have valleys. You have to steady yourself. It used to be in the beginning when I would get a transaction that did not go or have a sale that did not go the way that I thought it was going to go. I used to get very frustrated. You will be tried. When you are a reseller and entrepreneurial, you're in business, you're going to have to stand up for your business. Understanding that will make it a lot easier when you have to decipher between what is truly a disappointment because they do happen and what is truly a situation where you are going to have to get into handling your business that leads us to communication. If ever there was a time that you have to learn how to be a communicator, and I'll say one step further, not even just a communicator, but sometimes you have to learn the art of negotiating. Be well-versed in soft skills, keyboard soft skills is what I call it. You don't know what people are going through on the other side of the keyboard, just like they don't know what you're going on the opposite side, sending and receiving, and sometimes things get lost in translation. Communication is even more critical, especially if people will challenge you. And it is at those times that you have to exercise the most diplomacy to keep your cool and your communication even keel so that it does not escalate situations unnecessarily. It doesn't make situations that have already escalated even more challenging to resolve. They will happen and how you communicate is all the more important. You're sending out things that you're selling to someone. And when I say communication too, I, I don't mean just in terms of keyboard. It's what you say to people when you're shipping something off to them. It's a thank you note. It's taking the time to carefully wrap and prepare and package and label. It is all of those things. There's spoken and there's unspoken communication. To me, it is not about the sale. It's about taking the time and letting the person know that you appreciate the fact that they have spent their hard earned money, whether it be 50 cent or 50 or 500 or 5,000. They feel comfortable to purchase something from you. They truly want the experience. Let's move on. The next thing after communication that reselling teaches you is to customer service. It is all about the experience. People remember great experiences and they remember what? Bad experiences. The person could be buying from you a little thing, a nail polish, and if you take the time to wrap it up, put a bow on it, send it on to them with a nice thank you note, it means the world to people. Nobody wants their stuff thrown in a, a basic brown box, no tissue paper, no nothing inside. I have received things like that from some of these resale sites where they just make it so basic, it's not even enjoyable. You get it and you're like, that's it, it's lame. I digress. So remember, good customer service is everything because your customers, our customers, they don't forget it. This is where we get to the most important things. When you have a business, bookkeeping is very important. I anticipated what could potentially be. So what that made me do was get myself ready. Get yourself a TIN number, a tax identification number if you don't have one. Even if you've come up with a name for your business but you haven't gotten to the point where you're ready to start selling anything as of yet because you're still prepping, before you even do that, get a tax identification number. Even if your business isn't profitable yet, get a tax identification number because guess what? When that business becomes profitable, and we all know with the IRS, with the rules and everything that are changing, and that $600 threshold for selling kicks in, right? You will be 1099. Good bookkeeping is critical. Keeping in a place where you know you can reach for it because you're gonna have to reference that number, especially if you are working full-time and you also have this business that you are, are dealing in. You, you have to record all that stuff. Also, 
any inventory that you have. You, you have to document carry over inventory from the end of the year to the beginning of the next year. These are things that I had to learn. I, I taught myself because I wanted to know owning a business, what exactly was I getting into? I always say cover your what? Cover your assets. Find out what the rules of engagement are in your particular state. Find out what it means to have a business and get prepared. Balancing books, red and the black. You want to know what your business is expenditures are fiscally so that you can see exactly what it is that your business is or isn't doing buying and merchandising those things go hand in hand it helps to be organized not messy not sloppy not throwing stuff into a big death pile that you say you're going to get to and you don't get to because it makes no sense to buy all these goods if you are not going to do what get it home wash it, hang it, and list it. I have to say, I used to be guilty of that. It makes for a gigantic headache because you don't know what you have. You don't know when you purchased what. You have to know what it is that you have. Segwaying from there, how you list the things. Please don't have anything wrinkled. Please don't have anything that's not put on a mannequin or laid out nicely in a display so that people can get the visual. You don't want anything leaving that has stains on it. If it goes out and there's a hole you didn't see or if it goes out and there's a spot you didn't see, guess what? It is going to come back. And as far as merchandising goes, I will tag it so that I know that it has been snapped, it has been put up for sale, so that all I have to do is reach for it and put it in the box. The last thing that I wanna share with you guys about resale and the thing that it teaches you, stay organized. I always go and I look through the racks and I say, oh, maybe I need more jeans, maybe I need more jackets, maybe I need more coats, maybe I need more fur. That's a part of organization because you know what you've sold, you know what your inventory looks like, you know where you're lacking. It does help to shake down your inventory because some things end up what I call in a twilight, which means it's just never gonna sell. Those things, I prefer to just pull and make a clean donation. I tried with it, so here it's gonna go back into the universe and hopefully somebody will find it and love it or they'll find it and be able to sell it. Once your business, once your resale business becomes profitable and do not commingle money, separate your business from your personal. Open a business checking account before it even gets to that point of money coming in. Open a Roth IRA for your business and put some of that money aside. As the business starts to grow and grow and grow, you can see exactly where that money is going. And then not only that, your business will reap the benefits for you later on in life. Think about it. You're putting all this time, energy, and effort into growing something that you love. One day, that business is going to be able to what? Take care of you. Let me just close it out here. A business teaches you to be patient, consistent, to stick to what it is you know you are really good at. You can't cut corners. You're either gonna be in it or you're not. Is it always easy? No. Is it always difficult? No. Is it exciting and very fun and challenging and well worth it? Answer fucking lutely. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the things that I shared with you. Any questions, thoughts, anything for me, any other things you'd like for me to talk to you guys about with owning a business or the things that I've gone through with having a business. If you do not want to miss out on anything that I post, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Sunday, so tap that. Head on over to Poshmark and check out my closet. I am Concrete Catwalk on Poshmark. New listings will be coming soon. If you see anything there that you would be interested in, please feel free to leave me a message there or you can head on over to Instagram. I am the Catwalks Concrete on I. G, feel free to DM me there as well. Thank you so much for stopping by this week. Be safe. See you all next Sunday. Bye for now.